Hey friends, welcome back to your favorite podcast and the number one podcast in Toronto, Canada. That's right, you are tuned in to the Pals Podcast. For those returning listeners, thanks for joining us again. We appreciate you. For all those new listeners, welcome to your new favorite podcast. I'm your co-host, George Boutsalis, and unfortunately, my pal Ricky is not with me for this introduction. So, it's just me today on this one. Um, We had a terrific, actually, I lied. Before we get there, pause this episode and go leave us a five-star review. Hit that subscribe button on YouTube, five stars on Apple Podcasts and on Spotify. Give us that like. We appreciate you. Now, without further ado, we have a very special uh, episode this week. We had our pal Dalton Pompey on the podcast. For those of you sports fans, baseball specifically, you know Dalton well. Uh, Homegrown Toronto kid. Not a kid anymore, but homegrown Toronto talent uh, who played for the Toronto Blue Jays during those historic runs. And up until recently, he is now over with the Anaheim Angels, actually just starting up uh, probably around the time of this release. So congrats, Dalton. Best of luck with the new team. Uh, We'll be rooting for you, pal. Yeah, guys, terrific episode. We heard about his career, kind of some of the ups and downs, uh, the highlight moments, and kind of some of the the struggles. Uh, He opened up a lot about what he's been through lately. It was a fantastic episode. Dalton, uh, you're a great dude, man. We've always bumped into each other on the city, but it's nice to finally sit down and have that conversation and get to know a different side of you. I'm sure our listeners are going to really enjoy hearing that side as well. That's all, guys. Enjoy the episode. Like, subscribe, share, tell your mom, tell your grandmother, tell your friends and family. Tell your colleagues, we love you. Let's give a shout out to the people that help keep the lights on. We'd like to give a shout out to our presenting sponsor, Cottage Springs. Uh, They make some of the greatest vodka waters, vodka sodas out there. Uh, Definitely check them out at your local LCBOs. Zero carbs, zero grams of sugar. Uh, We've said it on this podcast numerous times, some of the best drinks we've had. They just actually released a new raspberry lime vodka water and a new vodka lemonade. So check those out at your local LCBO or check them out online at Cottage Springs. That vodka water, by the way, is in like a four liter box or something. Yeah. That thing looks like a good time. Can't oh, wait to bust that up yeah. for the cottage. Oh yeah. Uh, Want to give a shout out to RFP Design, our good friends and our pal Andrew Moretti. They were the they were gracious enough to donate or to get to get one to provide us with this this incredibly beautiful couch that has really imp- uh, made our studio space and our and our online uh, video pop a lot more they make custom furniture they do custom beds custom couches custom chairs custom dresses anything you need for your house custom that they can they they can make it uh andrew is is not he is a serial entrepreneur and one who will is not shy to take on any new uh task or project nothing's too big or too small they are one of the they got to be one of the fastest growing custom manufacturers custom furniture manufacturers in canada um Shout out to them. Shout out to the team over there for making this amazing couch. Shout out to Andrew. Go check them out, guys. www.rfpdesign.com and let them know the pal sent you. And I guess last but certainly not least, give a shout out to Cast, uh, our baby and the newest and hottest social voting platform. Also no social media, but we're trying to get away from that because we're trying to be a little more objective. And what we're trying to do is be the objective assembly of public opinion. How we do so is we remove the friction of participation in online conversations by allowing people to be honest, authentic, unique, objective, and just downright curious. We eliminate the social pressures. We eliminate the influence. We eliminate all of those things that would skew someone's opinion um, in order to deliver fully objective and transparent results to our users and let them think for themselves. Because at the end of the day, everyone should think for themselves. I think that's about it. Go to ta- go to joincast.co. To download now we are in beta but the app is still fully functional and it's up and running so get on there now to get your usernames and start casting today because it's about to blow up my pal L- L- G. let's go, let's go. <laughs> yeah ryan that must have been a shit show so man. first we were supposed to do ryan and ronnie together you okay. know like ryan yeah yeah like, i know ronnie like, too that's their thing they're boys whatever yeah. so we were supposed to have like, both of them on and then i think Ro- <laughs> Ronnie was bless you. Ronnie was still in uh, was still in Mexico, and he mm. just like didn't come back or something. So we did Ryan on his own, and then we did Ronnie after, and both of them were hilarious. Like, yeah, they yeah, just, yeah, they're jokes, man. They, it was. They don't give a fuck. <laughs> no, it's exactly. What I, it see is. Down, I see him down. I see him down in like Florida. And I was just watching him like 
go crazy down in Miami. Oh yeah, yeah. I was with him, dude. The guy rinsed me of like at least friggin' three or four oh, grand. Mike, uh, Jordan, how's the sound levels? One second. Can you hear me? It's fine. Okay, yeah. we're good. Yeah. We're no, good. no, he rinsed me like three grand. He would, we'd go out and we'd like party and stuff, <laughs> and then and then the guy would just pay like all i see him just signing stuff i'm like bro i'm not even drinking like what's going on i had like one or two shots next thing you know he's like you listen guys i split up the bills and you owe me three grand i'm like what do you mean i owe you three grand he's like i don't know what i was buying i was just buying stuff and like we all gotta split it so we're all like no <laughs> not happening bro, not that's happening. A classic though i honestly. ended up giving him some money but i was like man you need to be more responsible bro. <laughs> getting out of hand well when we had him on so we all started like we're all pretty chill here and he's like do we have to sit like this we're like well he's like i want to sit in the middle i want to sit bitch we're like all right fuck, let's just change it <laughs> up he just sat in the middle seat you're just holding court man he's so funny yeah, he yeah. Was, he was a joking. character he's got his own podcast now too it's uh definitely a little more a little more risque than ours oh uh, yeah, yeah r-rated yeah. oh 100 percent. <laughs> it's like literally just about sex i think yeah he just interviews he interviews girls like, or there's one episode like just about like stories of like sex and stuff pretty yeah. much Sounds Shout out to right. Ryan. Good yeah. for you, man. Keep <laughs> killing about, it. Sounds about right. <laughs> I love that guy, but damn. Chill out, bro. <laughs> yeah, I, I get it. That's awesome, man. But uh, what's been going on with you? We, uh, I know we just said off air, like you're uh, signing the new team, so. Yeah, man. I'm just chilling, working out. I'm in Saga pretty much every day. I just signed with the LA Angels, so I'm looking forward to that. That'll be good for me um, to get out of here. Um, have more of a routine. You know, I feel like as an athlete, I've just, over time, I've learned to like, be pretty pretty routine oriented and structured you know with my life so when i kind of feel like i'm out of whack it's kind of throws me off you know and and getting back to what i do and you know that's playing baseball i've been doing this for like i don't know over 10 years now since 2010 i got drafted so like it's good to be back on track and you know doing what i love what's a routine awesome. look like for you um it changes it constantly evolves like for me it just right now it it, it includes like me going to saga i do my uh baseball stuff there um well it's supposed to be you know yeah, outside, yeah, but yeah, it's yeah. inside yeah, yeah. <laughs> pre-covid pre-covid yeah, 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 yeah. you're just, staying a whole you're working yeah, on the it's backyard outside, yeah it's outside yeah, yeah, yeah. on the field backfield yeah, no, 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 yeah we got you it's we got in an undisclosed facility <laughs> i'm not gonna say where <laughs> no but shout outs yeah and then they have a gym in there too where i'm able to like work out and do the things i need to do like today i did you know some sprinting exercises and drills and then i did some hitting with some of the coaches that were there throwing fielding basically they have a huge facility so whatever i can want to do i can basically do it awesome. um and it just it gets me as prepared as i could be to simulate a game but like nothing's the same as playing in the game you know yeah. besides you know being on the field facing the live pitcher and you know going from there is this the same training facility you grew up with no no no, no. this is like a brand new one like oh, when okay. i grew up I, we grew up in gyms we used to go to like school gyms and like do stuff in the gym and like, you know, throw each other ground balls and like throw the ball off the wall and, you know, do hitting into a net. Now these guys got full facilities where they can basically do as much as, you know, play a game in there. Yeah. And it's crazy how much it's evolved. And I think baseball has taken off a lot since I was a kid. I think a lot more kids are playing baseball. There's a lot more money being pushed into baseball. Um, a lot more opportunities too. Like back when I was younger, I remember the only way that we could really get scouted is if we got on the junior national team. I mean, some guys would travel, stay on their travel ball team, but like the junior national team was designed to take the best players in Canada and put them all on one team. So you have, you know, 20 of the best guys in Canada from coast to coast playing against professional guys, you know, first year, second year guys that just got drafted or signed. Um, we went to Florida, we went to Dominican, we even had like international tournaments, like I've been to Korea, Japan, um, wow. uh, where else, Th the, the Thunder, it was in Thunder Bay, my, actually my uh, under 18 world championships uh, of all places, -Bay. yeah, of all places it could have been, it was in Thunder <laughs> Bay, and I was like, well, this is nuts. It's funny you say that, one of our really good friends from Thunder Bay, we give him shit all the time for being up in Thunder Bay, it's like, Literally nothing going on up there. And he no, says but like we the also say, because they do the Little League, the Canadian Little League World Series in Thunder Bay. Do they? That's like the biggest thing out there. Because Dom says oh, his he, he owns us. a hotel. Oh, okay. His family owns a hotel there. And he says his hotel is sold out the moment they announced the tournament. Within 24 hours, the hotel sold out. Oh, don't get me wrong. The whole town was out to watch us play. Yeah, like, it was <laughs> nuts. Nothing else to do out there. Yeah, there's zero. <laughs> <laughs> I think there's like one McDonald's, like a, two convenience stores, and a strip club. That's all I remember from being <laughs> there. Like, and I was 17 years old. I remember. And that was the first time, actually. I saw a moose. Okay, I saw a moose. We were walking. Awesome <laughs> well, Canadian the, moment. Yeah, hundred percent. We were walking back to our dorms because what's the university that's there? Uh, Lakehead. Lakehead, and there's another one. Some uh, Napissing, I think. 
Nipissing, maybe. Yeah, Nipissing yeah, yeah. or whatever. whatever. Something like that. Yeah, so we were walking back to our dorms and stuff, and I remember looking to the right, and I, it was like a mystical being, like creature, was coming towards me. And I was walking with some other guys. I'm like, yo, there's a moose down there. There's a moose. And they're like, where's the moose? And I looked to the right, and it's gone. So now I'm thinking that ah, I'm crazy, did, and yeah, I didn't see, see it. it. No, I, I saw it 100%. <laughs> I'm convinced I saw it, and it was like the biggest thing I've ever seen in my life with the horns and everything, and that's my... You know, Thunder memory Bay. of Thunder Bay, <laughs> honestly. <laughs> did um did you ever play with a Marcus Connect? Yeah, I did. Yeah. yeah. He um he was a little bit older than me. Yeah, I think he's two he's years older age, than yeah, me. Yeah. yeah, he's two years older than me. But um, you know, when we got when I got to the Jays and we I think we played in, in high A together, which is in Dunedin. So we, we played one season together and, and I still see him. He just got signed to play like independent baseball yeah, down. Yeah. And he coaches he coaches uh, does like camps and yeah, stuff. Yeah, like yeah. I actually worked out with him one time when he was uh doing some stuff with some kids. Yeah, so. he, was, he was me and him used to be really good friends in high school. I played high school ball with him a little bit, but we were just friends outside of high school. But uh yeah, good good guy. And like I know because you mentioned the Jack Canadian junior team and I know he gave me one of his hats. They're Team Canada. Yeah, and he's got like massive head. Like yeah. your head. Big. Just shrink it. You know, I put it in the wash, and I'm like, ah, kind of, it's kind of cool. Who gave me a it. Team Canada hat? Sean Pazarski didn't play Team Canada, no, did he? No. no. He was OBJ. He was OBJ's. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I played baseball growing up. I, I think, so you were Mississauga. You went to Mount, you went to Mount Carmel? John Frazier. John Frazier. So I went to school at Loyola in Mississauga. Oh, okay. The old one, though. The, the old school, yeah. yeah Burn yeah. Thorpe thing back, back in the day. I'm, so I'm a 90. Okay. I played not nearly as good. Obviously, not nearly as good as you. Uh, I played. I was. I played the year. I joined the team the year after our team won off. Or, yeah, won off. So they won at Sky Dome. Mm. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. So I never played in that. My parents were always like, "You need to like, you know, buckle down and and play your travel ball and stuff." I remember I did play for the school team, K and, and John Frazier. So I didn't get scouted until like three months before the draft, my senior year in high school. But wow. my junior year, I was still you know scuffling, and I was I had a different body. I was like. Five ten, five nine, like a hundred and eighty five pound. Like I was stocky, man. Like I was like, <laughs> I was thick, dude. I was thick. I was not muscular. There's no muscle on me, just baby fat. Anyways, so I remember John Frazier. They got a baseball team for like the first time in like over ten years, and I said, you know, I'll play a couple games or whatever. And I remember yeah, that well, I'll just show up there, whatever. And we, yeah, yeah. I remember that the day that I knew this wasn't serious was the day that. We played St. Joan of Arc, and they had a girl, two girls playing second base and shortstop. And I'm like, no offense to the girls, but I'm like, they don't, we don't have enough, they don't have enough players to have a softball team and a baseball team, so they just combine them. And I'm like, this isn't, this isn't right. And I'm, <laughs> and I'm pitching too, right? And I was throwing the ball down the middle. I'll never forget, down the middle. Guy, walk, she walks on four straight pitches, and. I go to the umpire, I'm like, where were those? And he's just like, bro, she's little. Like, what do you want me to do? And I'm like, you're already at an unfair advantage. You're a boy. And I'm like, well, she's playing with us. So, like, so if I throw it down the middle and she's not swinging, call it a strike. So they oh, gave her the walk. Gave her the walk. Come on. No, man. I was like, this is a joke, dude. This is a joke. And, like, my, my parents had the audacity to even ask me how it went. I was like, listen, guys, this isn't real baseball. Have you guys been, have you guys been to the game? Like, Wait, holy have, shit. Have I ever told my pitching story on this podcast? Maybe once. So I tried out for in grade twelve. I went to St. Mike's with Marcus, right? So I played football in uh, in fall winter, and then I played um, I played what was my and I was swim. I was a swimmer. Right. So if you play on three high school teams, you get a uh, like an award, basically like an athlete award. Okay. I was like, hey, fuck. Do I play baseball, soccer, or I run track? I suck at soccer, so that's out. I hate running. So I hate out. running too. I don't think you hate running. <laughs> Even as though much I'm as fast, I, I hate running though. I hate so running. I was like, you know what? Let me try out for baseball. How hard can this fucking thing be, right? I'm in grade twelve. I'm kind of bigger, and I know how to hit a ball. So I sign up. They're like, "What team you play for?" I'm like, "The yellow team." You know, you have to sign up. <laughs> yellow team. They're like, okay, position. I'm like pitcher and outfielder. Like, oh okay. wait, you're making this up. No, no, this is real. Oh, sorry. Yeah, the yellow yeah. team. Yeah, yeah the, the yellow team made up. I've never, I've never pitched. I don't even watch baseball. No offense. <laughs> <laughs> no offense. I just realized that. So I, I sign up. Well, like most of the tryouts for high school baseball is just like BP basically. And then you throw like a little bit of live pitching, but yeah. it's mostly BP, right? Yeah, and yeah, I can, yeah. Okay, I can catch and I can throw. So They I, just want to see if you can do the basics, basically. Right? Yeah. So I made the team as the last player to make it. And just like later I found out just because I was a grade 12 and I'm like a good hype man, right? So, so, sorry, literally that's why I made the team. Like I was, I played double A. I was like sick for double A, shit for triple A. I was that kind of guy who yeah, was like really yeah, you're good. That fringe guy. Exactly. <laughs> but so when I made the team, my team was like, my school was really good. They made off, they won off the year right before I made it. I was the hype guy. Like they like, Same. all my buddies wanted me to be on the team. The guys who played OBJs, who played for like the Royals in Oakville. Mm. They're like, come on, coach. You gotta, the coach was the Royals coach. They got me on the team who to be the it? hype man. Pardon me? Who was it? I can't remember the coach's name now. Because um, I played for the Royals. 
So I might know. So, oh, uh, his son's, was it the Rose? Or is it, the, no, the Triple A twins, Stefan. Okay, okay. What's his last name? No, I wouldn't. While you're talking, well, the point of my story was that they all played. Like do you know Darrell, do you know Darrell Grib- Gibbons? Darrell Gibbons? I think he played for the Tigers, maybe. Mm, sounds familiar. Anyways, um, they all, like, there was one spot left, and it was between me and this other guy, and I guess they didn't, li- they also didn't like the other guy. So they literally <laughs> got me on the team. I wasn't the biggest hype man. I never played, started getting pissed. And then one game, anyways, I'm not telling my story. Yeah. It's your story. <laughs> I was the hype man. I was the man. man, that's why they literally took me. Like, Marcus was <laughs> like, yo, you got to take the step. Right? You got to take him. What was his so name? I make the team. Didn't play a single game. We're smashing team like 13 nothing. Coach looked at me, okay, Rick, get ready. You're going in. I'm like, sick. I can get to play. I've never played. Hell yeah. Never even played baseball in my life. She's like, hey, you're pitching. But you I was like, the yellow team. <laughs> yeah, play for the yellow team. <laughs> so he's like, you're pitching. I was like, oh, shit. So Marcus is dying because he knows I've never played baseball in my life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he's like, uh, okay. I'm like, hey, Marcus, how the fuck do I pitch? I'm not, I don't even know how to stand on the mound. I don't know anything. I don't know what a balk is. So I get up there, four straight balls. Second batter comes, four straight balls. Third batter, strike one, ball one, strike two, ball two, ball three. Boom, full count, ready to go. Don't I peg this kid in the head? Just like, peg him. Come Coach on. comes up there. He's like, uh, Rick, you ever pitch? I said, no. He's like, why aren't you telling me? I'm like, why aren't you ask? He's like, you said you pitched. I was like, yeah, but I just wrote that down on the yellow team. Like, <laughs> I, I didn't tell you how old I was when I pitched. He's like, Rick, get up. And then Sean Pizarski, so get I, out. I got get it. Out. I yank. I got yanked. Just get up. Sean Pizarski came in, struck out three straight batters. So technically, my ERA it's doesn't zero. exist. Zero. Yes. My, my whip is, uh, is pretty bad. It's infinity, but. Yeah, whatever. Though. I pitched once. I got lit up, obliterated. I, I gave three, like three, three bombs and like an, or maybe two bombs in an inning. I think I got one strike out of my life, but. Yeah, it was shit. Anyways, <laughs> back, back to you. But uh, that was my, how did we get on that side story? Yeah. We were talking about high school baseball. Oh, yeah, high school baseball. Yeah, yeah, So you played a little bit stockier. Yeah, man. I like, I mean, even my my dad and my my brother would make fun of me, man. Like, I was I was thick, man. I know that feel. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I was just going <laughs> no, through a stage that, yeah. of puberty, you know? Like, I was really skinny in grade nine. And then from, like, grade 10 to 11, I don't know what happened, but everything was just sticking to me, man. Everything. <laughs> everything. And, like, actually, one of my old coaches, too, that I was working out with and he was telling so he was with some younger guys and he was telling them how I was fat and like basically saying like this guy he could have run he could barely hit and, and he couldn't really throw and it's true and I don't know what happened like between my grade 11 grade 12 year but I don't know I just went through puberty or something I kind of grew a couple inches and like I started to, the muscle started to stick and then I, my body just changed and I was just able to just you know I was just a freak for like <laughs> My last year of high school. Just I don't know. killing kids. Yeah, I don't know what. Hey, happened. Coach, remember when you called me fat? Yeah. Don't get me wrong. I wasn't jacked, but I was still. I was more in shape than I was before, and it's, that's kind of how I got my opportunity. So you just started like you hit this growth spurt. You started going yard on every pitch, or no, 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 no. More like get it out of the infield, bro. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, did oh, you boy. did you always play off like uh, outfield? Always. I mean, when I was a kid, I played infield. I think the better players when you're younger, they kind of stick to where you're going to hit the ball. I think yeah. a lot of younger kids can't really hit it to the outfield, let's say, as, as often as they will in the yeah. infield. So a lot of the best players play the infield. And then eventually they're like, you know, I'll go play the outfield because honestly, I don't know if you guys have ever been to like a batting practice for the Jays or anything, but these guys hit absolute missiles, man. And if you're playing the infield and that ball is coming at you 100 miles an hour, it's scary, bro. Oh. They move that fast? Like I've, ne- I've never played. I've played the highest again. It's AAA I've played, but yeah, that's, dude, that's it. it. Just so like, I don't. And I don't wear a cut when I play, so. For me to get on the infield, dude, you're not I'm, dropping. No, any. I'm scared, bro. I'm I, scared. I, I I'll like, tell the well, coach. Especially like the coach, I'm not doing it. <laughs> no, no, no chance. But but even like, to stay on that point, even ask you like, so you got drafted. So you said about well, ten years ago, you got drafted. From then to now, from what like you see the stats of like exit velocity, all these things, the ball's getting hit. Like they're getting hit a lot harder today too, even probably than. Or are they getting hit yeah, harder now yeah, than because back I then? Because I think they changed the baseballs. You know, like a thing, talking to a lot of guys, they always talk about how, you know, like a couple years back, the ball wasn't flying. Even pitchers that hold the ball, they say it feels different. Like guys were getting hurt more, pitchers were getting hurt, hurt more, and the ball was leaving the park a lot more too. So like yeah, yeah. there's kind of stuff that the MLB says that they don't do, but we all know that they do just from being around for so long. That's so interesting. Um, but yeah, I mean, the game right now is just built off of home runs and strikeouts and walks. Like, that's what it is. Yeah. Nobody cares about batting average anymore because it's hard to hit. Everybody's throwing 95 to 100. And to go up there and have success all the time is probably slim to none. So what they say is just, if you hit it, just try to hit it in the air and out of the park, and that's it. It's crazy how much has changed too, right? Because like that now, like even this year, I... I like again, I'm I'm a big baseball fan. I don't follow it as much as I used to when I was younger. But I've been seeing now, like I think in the last two weeks, I was in a PTI, and like the last two weeks, there's been like four no hitters. 
off yeah. guys who are like all very average pitchers, like in the career, like Joe Musgrove, some other dudes I don't even can't even name. And to, to your point, it's all just like either strikeouts or their home runs, and there's nothing right. really in between. Like guys, you also have the shift too, like. Guys aren't hitting for like singles anymore. It's not like just I slap the ball on the field and make Small a play, man. right? It's yeah. all just go yard or, or strike out swinging. Yeah, yeah. It's just it's it's crazy how much it's changed and like it's because of like the analytics of the game. Yeah. And I think from my perspective, it's kind of ruined the game in a way because like sometimes it's all about the eye test. You know, you might see a guy and be like that guy's good, but he's not gonna be able to play because this computer is telling him this is what he's gonna do for the whole season. I remember like they gave us all a sheet of paper. I think I was in like double A. And they gave us all a sheet of paper and they basically said, this is what you're projected to do before I even did it. And I'm like, some of the guys, it was actually right. I can't lie. You know, like, really? they looked at the list at the end of the season. They're like, damn, this is pretty close. You know? <laughs> <laughs> like, but how are you going to tell me what hey, I'm going to you had a over shit the, season. Yeah, yeah, they were right. Shit. 220, <laughs> damn it. And then it was 220 at the end of the season. Was it actually like, there were some guys that some was Some guys, it was pretty spot on, man. It was kind of scary. But um, I guess they just judge your tendencies and stuff like that. And like. They kind of know like what type of player you are, the way that you swing, the way that you move, how fast you are. They can kind of tell what you're going to do before you even do it. That's why there's That's more crazy. guys who are prospects and guys that, you know, get more opportunities than, than others because they can kind of tell through this computer shit. I don't know. It's crazy. Yeah. The, the money ball strategy. Pretty basically. much. Because yeah. you think about like the A's and like even like the Tampa Bay Rays, for example, they have like the second lowest payroll, but they were in the World Series last year. So you got to think that's yeah. why all teams want to be like that, because they're like, how can we save money and still have a productive team? Yeah. Because you got guys like the, the Yankees. I mean, mind you, the craziest thing is like, I think it was when the Rays played against the Dodgers, like the most expensive payroll in the league versus the lowest payroll in the league. Right. That's so crazy how the, le like, the sport has changed so much. Like. Excuse me. You go back to like when probably when we were all younger, it's literally the Yankees, Boston, maybe like St. Louis and a couple of yeah, teams, but like, but it's the high spenders, right? Right. And it's crazy that even now, like that's still, no matter what, like that spending money in the best players is still going to mean that you have a, probably the best odds. So like you have like yeah. the Dodgers who are just spending 200 million a year or whatever the yeah. hell it is. And they're going to be there. But then you have guys like, like the, the Rays who literally don't even use starters anymore. They use like opening openers, basically like whatever, opening pitchers. Yeah. And it's crazy how that system is, is showing that it works. Baseball is, like, very unpredictable. Like, you can't really – it's different than, like, basketball, I feel like. If you have the best five players on your team versus another team, like, you pretty much have the best odds to win that game because yeah. you have the better players. But there's so many unpredictable things that can happen in baseball. You know, you could walk the bases, though, to give up a grand slam, ninth inning with two outs. Like, you just don't know what's going to happen. More times than not, if you have the better team, like, you should win. But that's why the Dodgers were in the World Series, like, three years in a row, and they didn't win the first two times. True. And then they finally won. You yeah, know what yeah. I mean? <laughs> so it depends on matchups and all this other stuff that goes on. But it's interesting as I've gotten older and, like, been around the game longer and seeing how it's evolved. But we, as players, have to adapt, too. Okay. Because if we want those opportunities, we have to kind of... I mean, do what they say, you know, and, and listen to what they have to say as well as doing what we know what we can do too. It, it is interesting because baseball is one of those sports where it's like kind of like football where it's literally such a team effort from like start to finish. You know, in basketball, like you said, one player, you have LeBron, he can go on a random team and take them pretty deep into the playoffs. Mm -hmm. Like LeBron has that, that capability. Any one player on a baseball team or a football team can't do that. Right. You know, it's because it's such a, a bigger team effort where it's, you know, think about in baseball, unless you're the pitcher or the catcher, how often are you touching the ball game? Right. It, it's so tough, right? Like, you even think about, like, Doc Holliday on the Jays, one of the best pitchers ever. It's like, did they ever do anything while he was there? Never mind. The team, right. the team you just got signed to, like, to Anaheim, like, they have the, probably the best, well. They probably have the best player in baseball. Mike Trout. Mike Trout. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, like, crazy. He's been there. Well, didn't he get probably now? drafted on the same yeah, he similar was, uh, time? I think he was 2009, I think. He was the year before me. But yeah. yeah um, and like he, he hasn't gone, he's gone to playoff once. I don't think he made it past yeah. the first round. Yeah. Now yeah. they have Shohei Otani too, and they're still like, hopefully you're going to yeah, bring that guy's bring ridiculous some, though, man. Yeah. That guy Otani, man. Holy. Crazy. The but fact the, that but he could throw 100 and he can go yeah. and hit homers, he leads the league in home runs, it doesn't make sense. He leads the league in home runs and he's got like a two ERA right now. Yeah, it's, it's, it's disgusting. That's crazy. Like, and like yeah. honestly... Kudos to him, my yeah, guy. That's, that's nuts. But that's the thing that, to your point, like, you can have the best player, and like, it, but it, it doesn't necessarily always translate, right? Baseball, to your point, is unpredictable. But like, there's so many intricacies too. Like, you have to really appreciate the game to understand. Like, even more so than that, like, you can change players, you can make double, especially in the end, you make double subs, you can bring in, you can pitch yeah. runners, you can do all these things. It's crazy. Never mind. You know what? A crazy example, and I think you were in this game if I remember correctly against Texas, that game where they had two errors at the middle of the field. Mm -hmm. Back in, was it 2016 2015. or 2015? 2015. When 
it was actually no three errors in the same inning. I think it was Ogdur had the one error. I think Andrus and Beltre had the same error, had the error in that inning. Yeah, 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 something like that. Yeah, yeah. They I, had um, it was like uh, Mitch Moreland threw the ball in the dirt. Andrus had two errors. He dropped the ball at third, and then he made the error throwing it to first. But yeah. yeah, even even that like that's so unpredictable. Like they were cruising, and like Beltre, who's one of the best, like one of the best third base like fielders. I think like whatever of his like time had an error at third i think I, i'm pretty sure you pinch ran one yeah of those i places. did i pinch ran for yeah. russell martin that inning yeah 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 yeah. man i didn't even i barely even stretched i just went out there it was hot <laughs> yeah. bro. I, was I was ready dude i was at that game were, were you at that uh, game there's so i was much, at like every game that all year those the playoffs. Jays playoff games were a big blur to me at that point i can't even, yeah. I, now this is all coming back to me now. i can't completely forgot that i was around this time it feels like yeah. forever ago yeah it was like over five years ago but right? you see that too like like how unpredictable that is you had a team that like never mind like one error in an inning, especially in a playoff game, you have a really good defensive team. Like you have Andrews on Texas, three errors in one like one series of plays. Yeah, it was nuts. That's man. insane. It does, like, it doesn't happen, but you know that's baseball. Yeah. Anything can happen. Yeah. yeah, that year, I mean, not to like bring like that man. I was, I mean, I was, as a player, I'm sure that's even harder. Like you're on that team, but like watching as a fan, like 2015, even 2016, I was like, man, this is the year they're gonna bring that fucking yeah, the banner yeah. back. I remember just like going to the games and like I went to games as a kid too, and like. You know, the whole half the upper deck 500 level was empty. You know, now, like, when I when I showed up that, that year, and, like, I think it was, like, around, like, the end of September, middle of September, I remember you couldn't even find a seat open. And I'd never seen the Rogers Center like that, even when I was a kid. Yeah. And, like, even going out, like, we would go out, like, a couple of us would go out to dinner, or maybe we'd go out that night or something, and, like, people would just, sound. like, yeah, a little yeah. loss, a little <laughs> EFS, you know what I mean? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know what EFS stands for, right? Everything's, yeah, everything's for, sale. for sale. Yeah. Shout out to our boy Sacco. Sacco will yeah, listen to this episode. Sacco. Sacco will listen to this episode. Sacco's I love Sacco. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Sacco's actually in our. He's actually. Yeah, he was. Was he in the studio? Yeah, he yeah. Was in the studio. Where'd he sign? Sacco's in our fantasy baseball league too. Oh, is he? Right yeah. There. Ricky's the worst fantasy baseball manager in the history of fantasy baseball. I came in second. He well, can barely put the yellow team. I'm in the yellow team. Yeah, man. My ear is zero. Sacco's gonna message probably. He's gonna listen because he does listen to a lot of our episodes. Yeah. Great guy. Yeah, I love. We actually saw him on Saturday. But yeah, anyways, to continue, it just yeah. that, that year was just nuts, man. Like we would go out anywhere, and like sometimes people give us like standing ovations, like when we walk in and stuff. Like everybody was offering like pay for our food or our drinks or whatever, and it was just like one of those things that I couldn't really comprehend it because like I used to go come to games. I was a fan of the team, and now I was on the team basically for like one of the best years. The those two years, fifteen, sixteen, next to the World Series, yeah. you know, and like oh, the yeah. fact that I grew up in Mississauga was kind of crazy to me. You know, people were coming up to me saying like, I was like the hometown hero and like they were telling me like where they're from and like, you know, there was that, that connection there between like me and them obviously being Canadian and stuff like that. But that whole ride was just, was just nuts, man. And like, you know, looking back, obviously I wish we would have made it farther than we did, but it kind of is what it is. We got beat by a good team. And that's that. That's why it's a seven game series. So we had our chances and we just didn't do it. But uh, man, those those years were crazy. And people still talk about it to this day. I think it's something until until like the the teams that come after us make it that far, then maybe we'll kind of be on the back burner a little bit. But well, never, never mind even that. Like you're right to that point. I like, can tell someone does that better. But like, it's just crazy how it happened. Like the, it, both like that year, like the excitement, how the walk off happened, like all of the, just the whole story like they made the trade for Price and, and Tulo and you guys like never lost a game again like it yeah, was insane yeah and like that whole that whole thing to it like I, you know being a baseball fan a kid to play baseball in like in Mississauga as well but I can't even imagine in your perspective like you're sitting the hometown hero like you get drafted to your hometown team yeah. and then experience that like yeah I mean, I can't even imagine what that must have been like for those couple of years. Like, weren't you only the fourth or fifth Canadian to ever play on the Jays? No, no. There's been many Canadians, but I was like the, like the third or fourth guy from like the GTA or yeah, something like yeah. that, or like Ontario. And then I was like one of like one of two from like the GTA. I mean, yeah, Russell cool. claims that he's from here, but he grew up in Montreal. He was born in East York, but yeah, like yeah. he claims he's from Montreal, which he which he is. So I mean, even that in itself was pretty cool, you know. Yeah. Um, but yeah, just going back on that team, like I've never been on a team where we literally thought we were gonna win every game. Like there was so much confidence oozing. We're like, we're not losing. Like, like we would just talk shit about the other team, <laughs> like crazy. We're like, yo, this guy's trash. Yo, they're throwing this guy. Like, are they crazy? Yeah, like, that's on the bench. Hype man's right here. Yeah. Who's the on that note? Who's the biggest shit talker on that oh, team? Oh, Donaldson, hundred percent. Uh, Come on, hundred percent. Every time we played a national league team, he called it the JV league, bro. 
Shut up. Yeah, dude. He's like, these are junior varsity guys and stuff. He's like, this guy can't even hold my jock strap, all this stuff. Like, <laughs> well, wasn't that no. his MVP years too? Yeah, uh, that yeah. was his MVP year is 2015. So I, was, I was unstoppable. Was just, I was just, at, so I went to a lot of games <laughs> that year. I was at, me and my brother, i never forget this. And I tell this story because like, it's interesting with Toronto fans. It's a, it's a weird city we live in with the fans. We have some of the best fans in the world. Kind of bandwagon though. Yeah, yeah. that's what I was going to say. So the, the most interesting thing that happened, like, to be a real, real baseball fan, like you gotta be willing to sit through the game and watch. I'm like, when that stadium, don't get me wrong, I don't mind the bandwagon because like seeing the Rogers Center packed as a fan was insane. Like for you, I can't yeah. even imagine that's like. But the thing is, you get fans who don't really appreciate the game and don't know kind of the etiquette. So like, I'll never forget this. It was Donaldson. Like that year, you guys again couldn't lose. It was the last game of the season at home, and it was the bottom of the ninth. Bases loaded, and me and my brother, we had season tickets, five rows off third base. Mm. Probably saw 20 games there. Like, I was like, this is the greatest season I've ever seen. But to bottom of the ninth, the last home game before playoffs, playoffs locked up, all these, th- whatever. My brother and I are sitting there, and we're like, me and him, like, like he's going to hit a home run. He's going to hit a grand slam walk off, guaranteed. It's going to put an icing on the cake for his MVP <laughs> season. You guys had six games left on the road. We're like, my brother's like, fuck this, we're standing up. We're like, the nicest, he's younger than me, like, nicest kid. But he's like, he's like, let's stand up. So the whole s- section is sitting. I'm like, first of all, I'm like, this is insane. Bottom nine, bases loaded, everyone's sitting. We stand up. Lady behind, like a lady and a man behind us, taps on the shoulder. Like, Can you sit down? I was like, guys, respectfully. I'm not being rude, but like, it's, it's one, oh, three pitches, and it's over. And he's probably gonna go yard on this. So like, <laughs> show some respect. He's an MVP. Right. <laughs> they call security. Security walks up. Sergey said, "I'm like, I'm like, are you like, yes, yeah, you serious? Like, this is the best season we've had since '92 yeah. or whatever. You're asking me to sit down." My brother starts like yelling. He's like, "Everybody get up! Everybody get up!" Like everyone stands up. Yeah, yeah. People behind us. <clears throat> I think I can't remember when full count or like two two. Donnie goes yard. My brother just turns around <laughs> and just looks at him like this. He's like, "That's the MVP. You're lucky you're here." Or something like they said something. But like, that's hilarious. That season was wild. I couldn't believe. I it. I remember but, like game five too. Like from the first pitch, like nobody was sitting, dude. Everybody was standing the whole game. Oh, the play like the oh, and then the playoffs. Dude, people were just standing up. I'm like, these people are not going to sit down for the whole game. It was, but, that, but that's how it should be. Yeah. Like think about the Raptors playoff run a couple years ago. We went to was it me and you the game we, six against against so Milwaukee. We're literally getting told to sit down. I'm like, do you guys understand? We're like about to witness history here. Like the Raps have never done this. We are like the most disrespected team in the NBA, and Pretty we're about much, to go yeah. to the fucking finals here. Yeah, and you want us to sit down? Well, he's like, I paid good money for this. I'm like, well, technically, I paid a little bit better because I'm a row in front of you. So <laughs> no, like, you should <laughs> quiet, quiet down a bit. You're like, not wrong. Pete like, down, yo. Yeah, I was like, are you kidding me, lady? But to your point, like it's like Toronto fans. You have some crazy diehard fans for every sport. Like, like right. to your point, you'd see Jay's games where like people would still go to games. Like you still have good twenty, thirty thousand. Yeah. But yeah. then when it packs up, you get the bandwagon fans. Same with the Raptors. I don't mind it because seeing a packed stadium is like the craziest thing in the world. But it's so interesting, especially those years. And that was the first, besides like the Leafs being kind of good back in like Sunday's day, I guess. I'm not a big hockey fan. But like seeing the Jays, like you guys pack a stadium right. like that. And then see people say like, you know, can you sit down? Like, man, like, are you kidding me? Like people, people will never see, have never seen this in their lifetime. Right. Exactly. And like, but anyways, that like, was. Like uh, I was born in 92. So I don't remember like when they were in the playoffs. No. Like I was a yeah. kid. All I see is videos of like. And I and I know some of the guys like Robbie Alomar and like um, uh, John Olerud and all these guys that came up before me, and they talk about it. And I'm like, dude, I wasn't there. I just was yeah. just born, you know. So like this was this was like our kind of like '92, '93 yep. in a way yeah. with the Jays, so to speak. But like the Raptors, on the other hand, like that was crazy, man. Like I wasn't even here, but I wish I was here. I don't know if you guys went out when they won, but oh, like, I did. I did, and I missed that I night. Heard. I so I just bought my first condo down. My first, I bought my condo downtown. And I was supposed to move in on the Saturday. I called my realtor. I was like, look, it's game six. The Raps are they're taking us. Because we went to game. We went to game. I went to game one. I think so did you. Uh, the ra- Raps yeah, here, yeah. And one. then we flew to San Fran for How game much were three. those tickets, by the way? We have, so we have both have seasons. We're very fortunate. But oh, wow. They're, they're I bought. So for game one, I didn't. I bought my. Because we have. We actually had. A, we had two. I have a family of five. I have a sister and a brother as well. So my, I got the short end of the stick. We pulled straws and I couldn't go. So I'm like, oh, fuck this. I'm not missing this. I'm like, like, the Jays are my team, but like the Raps, I'm like, right. they're both like 1A, 1B for me. I was like, there's no way I'm staying at home. I bought my own ticket, like sat by myself for that game. Yeah, man. It's, it's I think wild. it was like, be there. I think I paid people. like yeah. maybe like 700. I was like up kind of like lower. In like, the sticks, yeah. No, no, like, like like the high end of the lower bowl. 
I think it was like seven hundred. I paid or something. Probably Forget one. what. Maybe maybe a little more for one seat. Yeah. I was about by myself yeah, on an yeah, aisle. Yeah. You just want to be there. Yeah. That, There's no easy. way I'm missing. Like I. Uh, that's the first sport I ever went to. Toronto. My dad took me to a game in '95 in the Sky Dome. Mm. And like, yeah, I was no, I was missing that. But I anyways. remember I went. So I got my condo. I called my roots. I'm like, look, we gotta move in, right? Game. It was game. Uh, game yeah, six. Game, game six. That's in Saturday. The finals. Yeah, in the finals. That Saturday, I'm doing a 200 kilometer bike ride to Niagara Falls and back. And we had just got back from San Fran a couple, like a day earlier. I'm like, look, we've got to move to the town. They're winning. We went to game five, or I went to game five. I don't know if you did. Here? Uh, where, no, yeah. there. No, here. Game five was here. So we went. I thought they were winning. I don't know. I went sure. to a few. I can't remember. So they ended up losing game five, unfortunately. Whatever. Game six, I'm like, they got a lot. I was at game five. Yeah. I watched the first half of that game on my floor in my condo because my couch was late. Fuck, <laughs> fuck you, Leon's. <laughs> Bought my couch from Leon's. They showed up. Oh, yes. Yeah, just in case they're listening, because they do a lot of work with the Raptors. My couch showed up. <laughs> couple minutes, couple minutes, like, it's first off, it's supposed to come at like six. So, like, it's seven. I'm like, okay, still not here. I, I'm calling the driver. He's like, yeah, I'm in East York. I'm like, what the He's fuck? He's probably watching, trying to watch the game. Yeah. Too. So he called yeah, me like, yeah. halfway through the second quarter. He's like, okay, I'm here. You got to come down. I was like, no, you come up. He's like, I need a hand. It's just me. I'm like, that's fucking sounds like it's a you problem. Damn. I'm like, my couch is in a bunch of pieces. Do five trips, bro. I don't care. I'm like, I'm not leaving. I'm like, you can wait till halftime. He's like, okay. Brings up one piece. We sit on the one piece as he goes down to grab the rest of the couch. And then we watched, we did a piece by piece. That night went out, went to Lost and Found. Had a crazy night. Came back in. It's like three o'clock. The streets are still howling. So I live right on King Street. Streets are still bumping, going crazy. I went back out, had right. a blast. Next morning, I showed up to work and I was like, Ricky, just go home. You, yeah. you just you look like it was like a national like, holiday. I feel yeah. like the next day. He's like, you look oh, terrible. Yeah. Just go home. Yeah. So that's. I was anyways, cheesed. I had, was, to get, I had to get on a train to Ottawa the next day for work. So I watched the game with my parents, which was kind of like it was nice because like they brought me my first game. But like, I saw my buddies. I turned my phone off. I was like, if I see this, I'm gonna go downtown. I had to be at like on a six a.m. train to Ottawa. Bullshit. I shouldn't have gone to that meeting, but you know, whatever. Wild, 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 man. Uh, wild, yeah. yeah, I know, I know, man. But uh, actually, I, like I have, I honestly, so <laughs> I didn't experience that. But like, funny enough. After that game five win, I went to Lost and Found that night. And I still remember because I still have the pictures like in my uh, on my phone. Or oh, was it 2016? What year did Odor punch Batista? That was 16. So it was 016. It was 16 after you guys swept them. So you probably, may probably don't remember this, but a bunch of Adonis and those guys, we all made giant rat pictures with Odor's head as the rat. So we took those around the city after, and people were asking to take pictures with them, <laughs> sign them. Like I think I had the Crying Jordan with – I did have the Crying Jordan with yeah, text yeah. on it. Do I have it here? No. Anyways, we, we it was a fucking wild, wild, yeah, wild yeah, fucking yeah, time. I mean, but. I remember that after that game five too. Like we went to EFS that night, and I just remember like walking in like some bars and like just people like giving me standing ovations and stuff. And then by the time I got to EFS, I was absolutely crippled drunk. Though. Like, <laughs> yeah, I but Ryan know. still hit you with a three thousand dollar bill that night. No, eh? I didn't even know Ryan back then. Thank God, bro. That guy would have rinsed me there too. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you just won. All right, bills on you. <laughs> yeah, I never said. Oh, three grand. No, no, make it five. It's not the Blue Jays, yo. What do you mean? <laughs> You probably say that he plays for the Blue Jays or some shit. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that night was crazy too. Like even like the next day on the flight, like nobody was saying anything. But like whatever, we get to celebrate, we get to enjoy the moment, and then the next day you pay the consequences. Back to work, but whatever. Yeah, yeah, back to work. Yeah, pretty much. Do but, you? Uh, did you, I can't remember? Do you just play with the Royals both years? No, we like, played the Indians the second. The year. Indians. The first year was the Royal. It was the first year was the Royals, right? Right. Do you think you guys got robbed in that series with that? That, or do you think that they were like like legitimately? Then they. Honestly, I tell everybody this this story. I remember, um, so I was coming off the bench and whatnot, but I think it was game three, David Price was pitching and he was cruising. And then there was like a ball that dropped in between Goins and, and Bautista in the outfield. And then the floodgates opened and they scored like five or right, six runs right. or something like that. And like I was like just staying ready in the weight room and every inning – David Price would come there and it would be just like me and him watching the game on the TV and when it was his turn to pitch, he'd go back out. And I felt like that was like the turning point in the series because like we should have won that game and that would have changed kind of like the whole narrative of the series. But we lost that game. But I have so much respect for David because even after he gave up all those runs, the guy came back down into the tunnel, into the weight room, and you would have thought nothing happened. And I was just like, you know, I kind of wanted to leave. I, I thought he might freak out and like, you know, guys get mad. And like, he was just so calm about it. And he was just, you know, kind of giving himself some like positive self-talk and stuff like that. And like, that's like a true professional, man. Like, I've never seen somebody do that. Like, I remember guys like Ho Jose would like throw his, like, if he struck out, you got to hide because he's going to throw his helmet <laughs> or his bat or something, you know? But that's just the type, that's how he dealt with stuff. But like, David didn't do that, man. He was like super calm and stuff like that. 
Um, but just a bunch of great guys on the team that year. But yeah, I, f- I feel like we felt like we had a good opportunity that year. But I thought that the next year was even better because people don't realize that the Indians didn't even have like two of their three best starting pitchers. They only had Kluber and like a bunch of other guys, but they had a really good bullpen. Yeah. Um, but like we, we either year, I feel, feel like we should have won because we basically had the same team both years and it yeah. just didn't work out, you know? kind of works out it's, it's unfortunate it happens that way but honestly i mean like from the as a fan of the city like it was like some of the best ball you've ever electric. seen some of those, yeah it was honestly electric <coughs> uh, one thing you said too that's what's interesting is like i remember when the trade happened like the price came over and like there's a story about he bought everyone's scooters and all this thing and, like yeah. he was like such a like his, uh, his reputation was that he's like a professional right like right. he's like a very team guy it's so interesting because he signed a deal in boston after and all you heard was like Boston, everyone in Boston hating on him. Now, mind you, Boston fans are absolutely like they're nuts. They're the worst. But it's crazy. Like the guy was hurt a little bit, and like they just kept, like, they just kept be, like pounding on him, and pounding yeah. on, him, like you know, saying all these like kind of negative press around it, which is so interesting. How like one like every team he went to before the Detroit to hear whatever, like he was like beloved. Mm-hmm. He go to one city, and they just like absolutely like because they don't care about that there. Like in like Boston, New York, all they care about is winning. You know, yeah. all they want is like winners and stuff. And David was known for like not pitching as well in the playoffs. So like we're going to pay $200 million for something that's not even going to help us like go far in the playoffs, which wasn't true. I think he just like had something mentally going on with him, you know, and, like th- it doesn't help. Like as an athlete, like we hear this stuff too. Like people don't understand, like we're still human beings. Yeah. I always tell people, I'm, like, I'm not going to your job telling you, you suck at photocopying or like printing or like whatever <laughs> the fuck you do, you know, like that's shut up. That's fucking it, man. Yo, shut up. That's and like one time I sat in the stands at the Jays game and everybody's like, oh, what's this guy swinging in the dirt and shit? I'm like, yo, shut up. Like you were in the stands. I was in the stands one game. Yeah. Because I was hurt and like they just said, yo, I'm, I wanted to get a view from the stands. Like, you know, a couple of people knew who yeah. I was, but I was pretty incognito with it. But just like listening to people, how they talk, you would think that they were getting paid millions of dollars too. It's crazy. It's crazy. Go On ahead. that note, I went to a Leaf game. So I'm a big Leaf fan too, right? And I, again, me and George are very fortunate. We have tickets to so many events. <clears throat> and I'll always stay. If it's a home game, I'll stay till the end, no matter what. Win, lose, blow out, doesn't matter. I'll stay till the absolute end because at the end of the day, athletes professional athletes whether you're having a bad game or not you're still giving it your all right you're still trying to just some days you have a fucking bad day at work right that's what it is i don't have a fucking great day at work every day there's some days i come to this podcast and i can't even fucking talk right, right. but i don't expect people to come in here and yell at me for sucking at my job so why would i come in here and yell at someone right. else on their job right oh and the, the idea is like oh we pay good money to see them. It's like exactly yeah, they we feel pay entitled good money to see them, but yeah. we're part of this it's it's us that makes them want to do better the more we cheer the louder we cheer the more we support them the more they want to work right. and it goes both ways right like people leaving fans early and like i'm a goalie in hockey so it's like you'd see people chirping a goalie because he had a bad game it's like you know what you fucking get in there and let's see you do it yeah exactly let's see how good you are oh you're not that's why you're not there and we're up here and that's why they're in there so you know if you don't like it just politely get the fuck up and leave right i've almost been in so many fights at right. sporting events because like, <laughs> i know dude, Ricky's, Ricky yeah, will I, call I anybody yeah, yeah, yeah. else uh, literally i leave him i'm sitting right behind the goalie four rows up season tickets and I'll see a random person that I've never seen before. So I know they're not a season ticket holder. Then it's like maybe a little bit of snob, but yo, don't fucking do this. Yeah. And I'll see them. They'll be standing up chirping like Anderson or one of like the Leafs goalies. And I'll be like, sit down. What are you doing? They're just happy to be there, man. It's like, what are you doing? What are you honestly doing? Oh, well, you should have saved that. Okay, you know what? You fucking go do it. Let's see. Let's see. <laughs> the best is those you old, can't do those it, so old guys who sit on their down. couches all day, sit watch the games, down. and like, they're, they're an expert at hockey. Right. Should have done or hockey or, any, or yeah, sports. Any sport. It happens Oh, I should have made that double play. That was an easy one. I was like, get in there. Yeah. It's so crazy. Hey, the like, the, it, 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 on the change and put them on and get in there. Let's see. <laughs> but it, but it is so things. crazy how people. Remember like, I told you I was in a good mood talking about yeah, COVID. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> talking about bad fans pisses me off. Yeah, yeah. You want to be a bandwagon bad fan? Yeah. You want to be a bandwagon fan and just support when they're doing good? I got no problem because I do it a lot of time too. TFC won't go to a game when it's cold. Beautiful Friday, Saturday game, TFC, I'm there. Heartbeat. No questions asked. Right. But you don't hear me booing if they're paying, playing bad because at the end of the day, these are people just like. Us, just like Jordan, just like you. We're all fucking humans. Nobody wants to get yelled at when you're having a bad game. Like, athletes don't know they're playing bad. Like, they don't know they're losing. Of yeah, course what do you, you think, we're are. idiots? Like, yeah, of course, course we know we suck. And of course if anything, you know you just got blown you up guys, in this inning. Like, of course you're fucking pissed. If any, but us yelling at you is going to make you feel better. No. For sure. No. I mean, if I anything, too, you guys are, in general, like, to, to, to get as far I as... I need to walk. I'm pissed. To get as far as you've gone. To get as far as you've gone, to make it to the professional level... Number one, you obviously have the ta- you have to have the talent, but you also have to have the drive and like the the kind of competitive spirit in you to like to want to win and continue to win and keep pushing yourself. Yeah. So if anything, 
you guys are probably more mad than the fans are. <laughs> yeah, that you, like, yeah. so because it's we so got families, we got like you know people that depend on us too, right? So like, there's stress that comes with that, not just from the game, but like as soon as you take that uniform off, like you, I become dull in the person. But I have like my parents, and I have a brother and a sister, and I have my friends, and I have a life, you know, that I'm trying to upkeep. And you know, if I'm talking to girls and stuff, like that's difficult. Like to have a relationship with somebody and like all this stuff combined with trying to perform at a high level because there's guys trying to always take your job and stuff like that's stress like every single day yeah. every day like people don't understand that but like when you kind of dumb it down for them and kind of put it in a way that they might be able to understand they kind of take it differently yeah you know and that's one of the things too that like i i loved about playing for the jays but i didn't love it i loved like being here and being a part of the team and having that opportunity to be here for as long as i did but at the same time, I could never get away because like the games are always on TV. And if I did suck that day, you know, sometimes I didn't I didn't want to turn my phone. I didn't want to look at my phone. I kind of just want to, you know, just be alone, whatever. And I got people sending me pictures of me striking out. I'm like, oh, they're, they're, you're so proud of me. But don't show me failing. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like it just there's just like a fine line between like feeling good about yourself and when, when you leave the park, but also like taking it with you, because a lot of us take it with us because we want to do well right yeah. like we try to even when we suck that day we say what could we have done better so like i'm already sitting on that let alone having like my phone blow up constantly and it's just it's hard people were calling me a dick for a long time and like i've learned that i have to have my own back you know what i mean like i have to look out for myself at the end of the day like yes you're my friends and my family and stuff like that but at the end of the day i can only see through my eyes i can only look after myself but some people don't get that they don't understand. It's, yeah, well it's said. really interesting. Yeah, yeah, really well said. Like, you know, people often get like, in, especially like sport, it's crazy. It's like, it, it, it's like almost like you look at it like from like a non-humanistic perspective. It's like, oh yeah, they're like entertainers for us. Like we pay, so we're entitled to give you our opinions and entitled to do this. Right. Social media even worse, like all these things just piling on, right? Like, it's like, I, yeah, man, I can't even imagine. Like it's almost like, you know, you have this obligation like to like perform well. You're also like on this big stage. You have someone come after your job. You have like, never mind, baseball's like the biggest farm system. So you have multiple levels of people coming in after, 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 after your job. After, yeah. yeah, yeah. And like, and on top of that, like you're also an athlete. So now in the world we live in, you're supposed to be accessible. Also have a platform to speak out on matters and all, like all these things. Like people often forget like, like, you know, we sit there and we watch and we're like, oh yeah, they should do this and all this and be good at sport. All these things. And like, and then we look at ourselves like, oh, yeah, someone gives us a hard time at work. It's like, well, chill out. Like, I'm doing the best I can. I'm going yeah. to HR. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to HR. Yeah. 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 Running some Excel sheets. Yeah, you're following some yeah. Excel sheets and running some numbers. Exactly. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. I never thought about that. Like, what the fuck? Is there HR in professional sports? Like, what? No. I, yeah. No, like, no, no, no. But that's so interesting. HR's right? a burner account on Twitter, no, man. That's Kevin Durant. Pretty that's much, it. Yeah, yeah. Pretty much. That's, that's really interesting, man. But, yeah, it's, uh, fuck, that's it's crazy. I, I want to kind of flip the switch. Obviously, we know there's always, you know, people willing to chirp and whatever, but there's always people supporting. Right. Who are your biggest supporters? Um, a little honestly, bit of a happier note here. Yeah, I think I have I have multiple people. I have like obviously like my parents have been there since day one. Like they watch all the games. Like my brother's playing right now. He's in Dublin with the Marlins, and like I can't oh, sick. watch the games w when he's playing because my parents are like freaking out. Like my mom can't really sit still, and my dad, <laughs> black arms. Yeah, my dad's <laughs> like don't, don't, don't my dad's like, like my dad's like oh remember remember our plan remember our plan. I'm like holy like you guys do this when I play too. This is stressful, <laughs> yo. But uh, no, they've always been in my corner and stuff like that. And like a couple of my close friends like that I went to high school with, I think that, you know, growing up, a lot of our high school friends, they kind of like, you know, do their own thing. But there's always that core couple that you still have. Mm -hmm. And those guys have known me since I was like 14, 15 years old. So like even when they saw me in like on that stage, they didn't treat me any differently. And that's kind of all you want as an athlete is just somebody that's just going to treat you the same and not like kind of you know, feel a way about you becoming something that's just, you know, physical as in like playing a sport because I'm still the same Dalton I've always been. It's just, you know, I'm on TV or whatever. Not, else. not as thick though. Yeah, yeah, yeah <laughs> true. true. Yeah, true. But no, like uh, I have some close friends and stuff like that that are also my corner, like my brother too. Like, uh, you know, we're always cheering for each other because we get it. Like we yeah. understand we live the same life. And uh, even my parents too, like they can only cheer for us to a certain extent because they've never played baseball. So they don't know what it is like to stand in the box and hit a 90 mile hour fastball or like swing a ball in the dirt. They've never done that, but they still give us the resources and like the positivity that we need to like feel better about ourselves and kind of, you know, keep going. Love that. Yeah. yeah. No, it's good. I feel like parents are always the best. 100%. Our parents listen to every episode. Like my mom's gonna follow you on Instagram. Like as soon as this episode, <laughs> yeah, yeah. she's probably the biggest. Oh my at? god! What's your at? Uh, at Elaine Liorti. 
Okay, okay. So yeah, keep an eye out. Yeah, yeah. she's she, like <laughs> they mom, are honestly our moms. She'll like, follow you. Shout out to Elaine and Anastasia. <laughs> like, she, episode, yeah. she, as soon as an episode's out, like she's got notifications on. She'll hear this <laughs> and she'll message. Me, oh, I really like that guy. Did he play for the Jays in 2015? It's like the whole episode. Yo, you know, like, half the episode was about that, mom. Okay, but just making sure because I think I remember him. I watched. I must have saw him play. It's like, mom, you saw like. 20 Jays players throughout the course of the year like right. but yeah he was one of them yeah I think I think we won't understand until we actually have kids or you have kids because yeah. like you know like they know it's from your, when you're like this big right when you just came out like your mom was holding you when you were born you know to what you are now so obviously she's just gonna be there she's just seeing you grow up and like she's gonna be proud of you and like she, my parents are proud of me and you know proud of you and all of us you know so like until we become that I, we, we kind of just like laugh and make jokes, but like it's serious, you know, like, yeah, that's our kid. Like, that's like we grew, we molded this person into what they are. So to a certain extent, my mom does the same thing. She's going to listen to this, too. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Sure will, 100%. What's your mom? Give her a shout out. I love you, mom. Valley, there we Pompeii, go. Let's go. Good. Good. Wholesome moment there. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You know, who I realized as we're talking to who else can listen to this. Your brother. Oh yeah, my his brother's a diehard baseball. My brother fan. will tell you every stat you've had, probably. Really, dude, oh. he's so. I didn't uh, even realize that. I, I should have thought about this at the yeah. beginning. So oh. John, we're saying like our our moms. I didn't, I didn't even tell him actually. Our Holy moms is in every episode. Obviously, Mind you, this ca- this happened really quick, right? How we it happened how fast. we organized <laughs> this Saturday. Like, for those who don't know me, well, we kind of all in the same circle. Like you know, we've yeah. seen each other out in the past. And we were at Trinity having a couple uh, social distancing beverages. Mm-hmm. Shout out Cottage Springs because they they basically provided us with the booze. And we saw Brandon. Uh, we saw Dalton there, and Brandon. We were with Brandon, so I guess shout out Brandon too. Called over Dalton. We said, "What's up?" He said, "You guys got a podcast." I'm like, okay, I'm gonna come on. We're like, okay, perfect, let's do it. And then basically from there, he's like, "Yeah, send me a DM." I DM'd him, and boom, Rest seventy-two hours later. Rest is history. Literally yeah. seventy-two hours later, we're here. Yeah, yeah, true. <laughs> well, okay, sorry. I kind no, of no, no, no. Oh, I, I was just gonna say, like, your brother, yeah, like John, big, big. His brother's the one guy who, like, he won't hear this probably for like three weeks. He's so behind on everything, and you mess it out of the blue and be like, hey, ha, ha, this is amazing. I can't believe I said this. We're like, what fucking episode are you talking about? Like, <laughs> oh, yeah, it's it's like a, he'll give us a quote. He'll give us a quote, and he's like, oh, yeah, I can't believe Ricky said this. We're like, what the they're fuck? Like, what? Ricky butchered that stat. I'm like, like what are you talking oh, about? fuck. Well, I butcher a stat every episode. So you gotta but I tell you right now, he's probably listening to this, and he's watched everything 2015, 2016, all the games. Right. Probably knows everything. He's probably like meshing us like in, in the future now, John. You're probably sending us a message right now correcting us for something yeah, we said he's wrong. Probably, oh, yeah, by but he's different. like, his brother is like... Oh, just to digress a bit, when I made a joke earlier about Ricky being the worst at fantasy, or worst at just baseball, like butchers every name in the league, yeah. his brother's the polar opposite. Knows every single player, every single stat, like everything there is about baseball. The farm guys, which leads me to my question about the farm system. Yeah. So baseball is like the craziest farm system. And you basically went up the entire thing. Yeah. From draft day, which has obviously got to be super exciting as well, getting yeah. drafted by a home team. Um, what's it like? Like, give us the process. Are you draft day a month later? You're on a plane to some random small town. Then you're there for a, a couple of months, and then boom! Like, what's it like? Give us. Okay, so it's changed a lot since I was there. Um, so when when I first got drafted, obviously it's it's, it's exciting and stuff like that. But when you fly down there, it's an eye opener. Okay, take in mind I was 17 years old when I got drafted. So I went from playing baseball like two, three times a week to playing baseball every day. And like now it's my job. And now I wake up in the morning at 7 a.m. And then I go, don't go to bed until 5 p.m. I mean, go home till 5 p.m. So every single day I'm eating and sleeping baseball. And that was kind of like an eye opener for me. But then also you get around. So you start in rookie ball, right? So it goes, it usually goes rookie ball, short season A, A ball, advanced A, double A, triple A, then the majors. So, so seven leagues. Six, seven. Yeah. yeah. Depends, like give or take. And so when you get that's to the, if you go just straight up, sometimes you go up and down, sometimes and you go up and down, sometimes you go up two levels back down. Who knows? Um, so when you're at this level, it's mainly in rookie ball. It's mainly like high school kids. So now you're playing against all the best high school kids, basically, in the country or in Dominican that were at the same age as you or Venezuela or like Colombia. So now you got to separate yourself from them to get to the next level. And like every level you go up is the best players from that previous level. So I call it kind of like a reverse funnel. Everybody's kind of like down here in a pile. And then you kind of work your way up till you get to the big leagues at the top, you know? And that's like the cream of the crop. Right. Exactly. There's like only 750, 780 guys in the big leagues. Right. So when you when you put it like that it, it sounds almost impossible because it sounds like you've got to go over so many hurdles and stuff like that 
but what the 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 farm team does is they they kind of take guys that like have potential like they show like they have some skill and like it's not always about being the best player at that level sometimes if you're making improvements they'll just call you up to the next level and to the next level because it's about development till you get to the big leagues then when you get to the big leagues now it's about performing now you have to play good and take all the skills that you learn and then kind of just throw it out there and and be that um but it, it is man some guys never make it i think in the history of the MLB, there's only been like 20,000 guys to ever like wear a uniform for like one day. So it's nuts, man. And how many guys oh. play like professional baseball? I mean, it sounds like it's crazy. It sounds like it's not going to happen. But I, I mean, for myself, it worked out because I was always big into like visualization. I literally would see myself wear the uniform. I could see myself like walking into the tunnel, like playing on the field. Like when I was in like high A and like double A, like, I wasn't really that close yet. But I always tell people that when I did make it and I was, it felt like deja vu. It felt like I'd been there before. I feel like, you know, people say like manifested it and all that stuff. I really feel like I did manifest it. I felt like I saw myself there. And when I was there, it just, it wasn't a surprise to me. But some guys, you know, they have doubts. Like if you have doubts in anything, like, do you really think you're going to make it far in anything? Like, that's just, that's just my personal thinking, you know, like I see people all the time. They're like, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm doing this, doing that. But uh, I'm like, okay, well, you're not going to do what you want to do no matter what because, like, you have that negativity in your mind. Don't get me wrong. Like, there is negative thoughts that I have, but how can I change those around because I control my own thinking, you know? Like, I control what I want to do and who I want to be. Nobody else can do that but me. That's it's crazy. crazy. It's crazy. Like, uh, the things that I've learned, and, like, I have a life coach now, and, like, she really helped me out kind of, like, define these thoughts that i have but it's really interesting man like people let other things affect them when the only thing that they control of any circumstance is their own thoughts that's it's your it. mindset 100 yeah. percent. yeah it's mindset at that moment that was a good one that's a good little it's your mindset and perspective a lot of it a lot of it's framing too right a lot of it's how you look at a situation i mean like to your point like you have to be able to visualize it and like believe you're going to be somewhere even if you're not ready even if you're not there even if you know in the back of your mind like Ah, maybe I shouldn't be here. Maybe I'm not ready yet. You have to convince yourself that you're ready. Right. Because at the end of the day, like it's a, it's a it's a cliche to say fake it till you make it, but you really have to believe it. If you walk pretty into, much, dude. If you walk into a room room and believe you should be there, you convince yourself you're there. So you start to embody what someone sh is like that should be there. Everyone else around you believes you should be there, and there's no doubts. You just kind of start to kind of it creates that feedback loop, right? Right. But even on top of that, even like to your point of like what you can control is your thoughts. On the flip side is like if something does go bad, not your way, goes wrong, that's how you frame it, right? Like, I guess to use a sports metaphor, like you have a bad, couple bad games and you're there. You're like, you can think about, oh shit, maybe I shouldn't be here. Maybe I'm not supposed to be here. Or you can say, you know what? Ah, I got to tweak my, my approach a little bit to play. I got to look at this a little bit better. I got to look like yeah. work a little harder. So I guess it also matters when you have those kind of bad things. Like, it's often how people say, like, you, you know, you can dwell on it and look at the negatives. Or you can say, you know what? Ah, could get a little better at this, a little better at this. Take the positives out of it and just keep moving forward with that. Like, it's it's kind of like the mindset and the framing perspective how you look at things. Yeah, exactly. I, I read something somewhere a long, long time ago. But it's saying that no professional athlete has ever not had a bad game. No, oh, 100%. So it's like, you got to think about Wayne Gretzky. I don't know who the Babe Ruth or whoever's the greatest baseball player of all time. Michael Jordan. Everyone's played bad. It's just impossible not to. You're going to have bad things. You're going to have bad months. Yeah. It's just the way it goes. Mm -hmm. And it's like, yeah, if you do, you can think about it and say, hey, you know what? I suck. I should. I don't deserve to be here. Or if you say, you know what? I deserve to be here. That's why I'm still fucking here. Yeah. Let's go. Let's fucking get back to work. Let's do this. And let's fucking. I swear right. so many times. Up before. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm, fucking, I'm juiced up today. Yeah. yeah got time yeah, yeah. about COVID. We're talking about the shitty you know, fans. Started with the COVID. Man, COVID got I'm, you I'm, going, dude. I'm getting going got today. Got you going. That's, yeah, I'm, I'm fucking no, going. that's really good that you, that you view it that way, man. That's crazy. You actually like saw yourself like. Yeah, that whole man. way up. Yeah, and then when I my first day in the big leagues, like we were playing in Tampa. What's and my, that like? Yeah, give us that. Yeah, my like obviously I was jacked up to be there and like couldn't I couldn't even sleep, you know. And then I get to the field and by by the way, Tampa Bay's stadium is the worst in the major leagues. It's not <laughs> Put even like on a blast. Real, That's it's it. not even like a real major league. Game. I'll say it to the camera. It's oh! not a major league stadium, <laughs> man. It's not. It's like trash tough. catwalk and shit on the yeah, ceiling. Yeah, and the, the the roof is white, the same color as the ball. How am I supposed to catch it? Anyways. So I remember going into the <laughs> locker room and my locker was right beside Jose Bautista's and you know, he when, wasn't there. Sorry. Yet. When was your first game? It was September uh, 2nd, 2014. Okay. So I get there and like, like think about this, this is a guy I've been watching on TV since I was like a teenager, you know? And now like I'm in the same locker room as him playing on the same team as him. 
And when he came in, I think this was like the defining moment because like I was so nervous to like meet him because like obviously like this was a big deal for me to be there. But like I was right beside him. Right. And he literally came up to me and he's like, hey, man, like I'm Jose. Like it's nice to meet you. Heard a lot about you. And he like literally took all the stress like out of me because I was like. I was so worked out. I was like, my armpits were sweating. As soon as I heard his voice, I was like sweating, dude, profusely, you know? Like, I was like, oh my God, just chill out. But then when he did that, it kind of calmed me down and it kind of made me feel like I belong there in that moment. And that kind of like set the tone for me that I could play there and I could be there and I could contribute to the team. And, you know, I stopped looking at them as more like idols. I stopped looking at them as like teammates and friends and like actually being able to hang out with them and get to know them and stuff like that. So like at that moment, I was overwhelmed, but then I kind of calmed down. And then obviously when you get on the field and stuff like that, you get those jitters. But then you realize it's like anything else, man. You've been playing this game your whole life. It's just just the stadiums are bigger and there's fans in the stands. But. It's nothing crazy. It's still like muscle memory. It's like you just go up. Pretty much. If you're walking to that plate thinking like, fuck, I'm going to swing at this pitch. Yeah. As soon as he throws the ball, you're like, okay, this is the same thing I've been doing my whole life. Yeah. 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 But no, it was, it was cool, man. And just like, you know, being there for as long as I have been, like I've been through a lot. I've seen a lot of things. I've had my injuries. I've done everything you could think of, but you know, I wouldn't change it for the world, you know, because this is just my story. Everybody has their story. You guys have your story. She has her story. Like, that's just of course. what life's about, you know? So eventually it's going to come to an end. I know, like, you can't play baseball. You can't be an athlete forever. So I'm just trying to enjoy the ride and just see where it takes me. That's awesome, man. Yeah. Are you are you somebody that, like, do you have, do you love the sport so much that you see, like, down the road, like, you know, continuing to stay with the sport and, like, a scouting capacity and a coaching? Are you not worried about that yet? Uh, see I, i've actually thought about it and like where i'm at too is just like i don't know how i feel about kids in general i don't know if i want to do young kids if i want to do older kids or like this is in regards to coaching or like scouting or whatever i just don't know yet i really haven't like sat down to think about it but i feel like i have a lot of knowledge that i could give to somebody and mm -hmm. i can give to kids so like why would i just waste that why would i just sit here and just be like you know what i'm good i'm just gonna chill out and go to the park every day and have a blast and that's it yeah. no i think i should actually help younger kids especially in canada because you know there's not many of us that have played so there's definitely something i want to get into but it's something like kind of like as a side gig you know do it when i want to do it not ha because i have to do it so you still have the passion for it. it's not like a job like i get yeah. out of the field every day gotta do this yeah more so like just kind of when you have the and there was a couple years back that i like between 2018 and 2019 i pretty much lost it. i didn't want to go to the baseball field i absolutely hated showing up it was a chore it was a job at that point and it was because of the business aspects of sports like Sometimes they don't care about you. They just care about like what you can offer the team and they'll tell you one thing, do another. And I was so turned off. I just, I didn't want to be there. I told my mom like every day, I'm like, I don't want to go to the field. You know, it didn't matter how much money I was making. Didn't matter if I was doing well or not. And then I kind of had like to snap myself out of it and be like, okay, well we're here. We're not just going to just roll over on our back, you know? And like that when I, that's why I go back to like that talk that I was talking about. Like I had to like have my own back and I had to like figure things out on my own and I had to go back and like realize like you know just because I'm a baseball player doesn't mean that it changes me as a person and it was affecting me so much I was set, like I was ignoring my friends like like I'd go on dates with girls and I felt like I was being so rude to them for no reason and I'm like why am I doing this you know this is not who I am but then I just backtracked I'm like okay baseball is making me feel like this how do I go back to when I used to have fun what did I do when I used to have fun you know and like just taking that stuff out and like you know going back now that i'm gonna be leaving soon i kind of just can't wait to be there and i'm just gonna enjoy every day like it's my last because it might be my last day playing baseball so if that's the case then i can go out with a positive mindset and feeling good about myself versus you know how i felt like a couple years ago so that's really cool do you think that do you think that's gonna like just because now like the mindset you're going into this now this transition phase i guess because i guess it's the first time you're, is the first time you're going to a new team like no i signed with the diamondbacks last year but i got released because of covid oh uh, so, okay okay so i was there in spring training and then they sent us all back uh like middle of march and then they kind of like had like a like an extended roster but they didn't bring me on because they wanted a lot of their prospects to play the younger gotcha. kids which i understand but now this obviously now the season's going on like you're, it's a kind of a fresh start right do you feel like do you feel kind of like rejuvenated and like in a good mental stage overall kind of like excited to to go with that mental state of like yeah because like, like i said whatever I, happens happens uh, yeah because like i said i'm like i'm only 28 but baseball has changed so much that like if you're 30 like 31 like you're kind of done because like i was saying earlier with all these analytics and stuff 
change the game they, so much. They know your stats. Uh, they're right. bang on when you're 30. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> they're bad. Yeah, you're yeah, looking at like 30 is going to decline. Oh, gosh, <laughs> I got to get there. Yeah, it's nuts. It's nuts. Stolen base is going downhill yeah, after 30. Eh? People ask me every single day, are you, are you just as fast as you used to be? I'm like, I don't know, but we'll find, <laughs> we'll find out. out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait till the computer spits it out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, 100%. Um, but yeah, I'm kind of, I'm approaching it that way because like, like I said, I didn't, after getting released last year, I didn't know if I was going to get another opportunity and just kind of sitting around for as long as I did. The, the phone never really rang. So I was like, is this it? If this is it for me, this is it, you know? And then I got that call, you know, a week ago and my agent told me, he's like, do you want this opportunity? I'm like, of course I do. And like, I'm just treating it as that, as that. like this, if this is the last call that I get, I'm going to make the most of it. It doesn't matter what happens. It could be good or bad, but like, I just kind of want to leave it all out there and just give it my all and just be happy to be there every single day. And then I'm also going to have the mindset too of like trying to help those guys because I know that they're stressed because I've been in their shoes and like they're a couple years younger and they're trying to make it. And coming from me, that's already been there before. If I can offer them any advice, I definitely will. But that's kind of just like, you know, paying it forward. Like I hope that when they become like guys in the big leagues that they pay it forward to somebody else because you never know what you might say to somebody that might click and like change their whole life. You know? I love that, man. That's a, that's a great attitude you have. Yeah, yeah. No, it's no, changed, honestly. man. It's changed. And, and you know what? Like with sports, it's all about attitude too. You right. know, like I feel like you're going to go out there and just fucking be a rock star because you have the right attitude. Yeah. And you're fully healthy, I'm assuming. Yeah, yeah, Everything yeah. good. Then I, I was reading earlier too that you had some, you know, injuries and stuff. And that's obviously tough because as an athlete, you're born, you are born to do, play baseball. That's what yeah. you're born to do. And then your body says, no, we're not doing this today. Yeah. Like, that that's what causes the mental problems too and like the stress that goes along with it so yeah man good for you i feel like you're in the right state of mind like you're gonna go out there and fucking crush it yeah i hope so man big I just, vibes like, man you got it, it just, I, i'm gonna fucking vibe it just like it just like with the like i had like numerous concussions man and like just like even the rehab with concussions is is brutal man like just all the stuff that yeah. the exercise i had to do and stuff a lot of times spent in my room in the dark just couldn't watch tv couldn't do anything so I'd spent months and months just sitting alone by myself inside a room, even though it was warm outside, just like staring at the ceiling and oh, like. Sorry, I wanted to. That's what I wanted to ask about. Yeah. So you said I can't remember. I've been trying to rag my brain. You said 2018, 2019 was like a tough time. Was that because you played? It was Team Canada one year. Like yeah, that's why I got hurt. You I made a concussion. diving catch. I think you like you. You like no, got the I concussion from second, it. Second, slid in the second base and like I hit my head. Sorry, that's what it was. Yeah, because yeah, yeah, I remember you had a concussion that year. Right, it was like right before the season started. Right was that the is that the time? That, that was like of? the longest one. That was the longest okay. one I had. And then I also had one in 2019, and then I had one the year before in oh, wow. uh, 2016, yeah, when I was in AAA for a bit. But yeah, so like it just, just having all those injuries and having those multiple concussions, like I remember like I was one day in particular, I was just walking home and I, was, I would just cry for no reason. I just started bawling my eyes out. No reason at all. I was thinking nothing and I was like, this like if this is going to be permanent like this is going to be the end of my life you know what i mean i'm going to be miserable forever because like my mood would just change like that and i was like man i kind of vowed to myself like if i can get out of this and i can feel normal like i'm not going to be this person anymore like i'm not going to be this negative person who doesn't want to be there i'm going to be this guy who just appreciates everything that he has in his life like even like you asked me to come to this podcast of course i'm going to do it you know so i know a lot of guys athletes too that some guys they'd be like no nah, i'm not going to do it but like, why? Like, why not do it? Like, why not be a part of something? You know, if I can help you guys out, you guys are helping me out. I get to talk about myself and sometimes I like to talk about myself. Sometimes <laughs> I don't. You know what I mean? <laughs> hey, you can come on here and talk about yourself anytime you want. <laughs> you're like, welcome here anytime, man. <laughs> but no, I feel like my mindset awesome, has man. changed, you know? And like, I just, I think that it doesn't matter who you are. Like, it doesn't matter what you do in your life. Like, it's all kind of like the same type of thinking. And if and if one person listens to this and can apply it to their life, then it was totally worth coming on. I think more than one. Dude, yeah, I think it's a think, man. You like what? Good. This is gonna be a record breaking episode. I feel it, dude. What well, you honestly? What well, you shared? Like it, it, it's universal, right? And like, like to your point, like it applies to whatever you do. It, it like the your like you, you know some people are gifted and they just have the ability to do everything they want to do, whatever it is. But a lot of it's a Ricky's point too. You said earlier, like mental plays a big part of it, especially today. Like we see what happens. Like we see how like mental health is such a big part, not only just of like the world of sports in general. So many athletes coming out and talking well, about it. Well, especially like COVID, man. Like this just been ruining people's like mental health 100 percent right people just let's, like let's not start talking about covid boys we're <laughs> no, good but, i'm in a good mood here no but like but it's a fair point but also at the point of like we even talked about like you know humanizing athletes and all these things like 
you know, I would guess like a lot of, I mean, if I was a kid, like not even a kid, if I was a teenager and I and I was a ba- wanted to play baseball, wanted to play any sport, and I heard like a professional athlete who played for his home, all, I was like, wow, this guy plays for his hometown team and everything. To hear that, like you go through the ups and downs and to hear that like, oh, I, you know, you go through that like a regular human being. Like, I think what you're saying, you're like, yes, it transits across like, and it doesn't matter what you do, what career you have, but also a lot of people that are younger listening to this, they're trying to pursue a dream or a passion. Like this would be invaluable for them to hear. So yeah. it's even really cool that you see that, and like you've been saying, like you know, you're going into like you know Anaheim, yeah, with like yeah, a yeah, clean slate, angels, and just like whatever off- help you can offer, like paying it forward, because like you know what, like who knows, like tomorrow's not promised, in, well, in anything, but like especially in the career of like a uh, of a professional yeah. athlete, like no it's doubt. I think it's really great to have that mindset and going with that approach, right? Yeah, honestly, man, kudos to you, like good for you. Yeah, thanks, we, we wish you like all the best in and. In, Whatever the future holds, and again, if you want to come back on and talk about yourself, you're always yeah, welcome. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I got okay. it all out today, honestly. <laughs> no, man, that, that's we, really we cool, love it, man. I, I feel like the positive energy I, and the vibes are, are flowing. I want to ask one more thing Go before ahead. we kind of get near the end. But who was the biggest like? We talked about Donaldson being the biggest shit talker. Who was the biggest like mentor or someone who gave you the most advice or just someone that really took you under their wing through your career? Whether it was early days, like you know, farm system, Jays. Mm. Was there someone that was really like a you know mentor, like would bestow advice um, on you? Honestly, for me, for a longer period of time was Devin Travis. I don't know if you remember Devin Travis. He's oh, the yeah. second baseman. I have, I, his jersey. I have a jersey. Number yeah, 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 yeah. You got Travis. That's my guy, man. I like he. He's coaching now. He's he is coaching, yeah, because his body failed him and yeah. stuff like that. And kind of like similar situation I was talking about. Like you just never know. And kind of he didn't even really get that last chance because he was hurt. But um, yeah, like I basically came up in the farm team with with uh devin but he played for the detroit tigers at the time farm team and then in 2014 like november ish he got like traded to the jays and he's been somebody who's like not only just been in my corner since you know i was in the farm team but even like when i got to the big leagues and stuff like that like he always had my back like if if i made an error in the field and like you know like i was pissed about myself he'd slap me on the ass and be like yo you're gonna get the next one you're gonna make a diving play you're gonna save the game like just like stuff like that like guys that just because you know a lot of guys in professional sports sometimes too they kind of worry about themselves and like as you should you have your own family you got this but like he was so selfless in this in the sense that he would give you all of his energy before he gave it to himself and wow. you, any guy on that team will tell you that the best teammate was definitely Devin Travis. Like, this guy always wants to make sure, like, everybody was, like, glued together. We were all clicking on all cylinders. Like, there was a couple guys on the team that butted heads. Like, they just didn't like each other. But, you know, Devin made sure that everybody was cool, you know? Really? And even now to this day, like, we still talk. And, like, he li- actually lives, like, five minutes away from my brother because my brother lives in West Palm Beach. And Devin lives over there, too. And he's getting married and stuff like that. And he's got into coaching um but even now like he he's done playing but like he's still like one of the biggest positive influences on on my life and that's kind of what got me to change my thinking too because i'd be like this guy just you know he might have struck out every single at bat and guess what you wouldn't even know it by like talking to him after the game he would be like so pumped about you making that play or you hitting that homer or whatever that like you wouldn't even know and like people like that in your life are just so invaluable because you just don't know like people like that don't really exist yeah you know they they really don't and like when they do come around you kind of got to cherish it and just like i try to surround myself with people that are you know positive for me it's all about association at the end of the day you are who you hang out with so if i can hang out with him if i can hang out with him and be around him honestly it makes my my day better makes me feel better and then i try to just you know like I said earlier, just pay it forward and be that positive uh, person for other people too. That's awesome, man. I love it. And yeah. I, you know, that's really, it's, it's unfortunate too to hear that because like Devin Travis is a guy I remember like around that time coming up. He was like, a good player, man. Good, uh, good player. And like, you know, I mean, you don't see the behind the scenes just hearing that he's even like that too. You feel for him even more because yeah. like all the injuries and everything, like he had the shoulder, I think, and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, like he could hit, it's man. Just, yeah, like, man, yeah. I already came up, but yeah, he that's really cool, man. Too, and like, obviously, like I said, his body kind of failed him, but um even he's still proud of his accomplishments like that stuff that he can't control but you know he kind of wants to give back to it i think he took like a coaching job with like the atlanta braves or something and he's and he's helping out with like the younger kids too because he's kind of like well how i'm thinking like you want to give back like those are the guys because think about if you're that young kid you're gonna listen to somebody that's been where you want to go and like you have the most influence like sometimes like when a college coach would like talk to me i'd be like 
okay, well, I play professional. You never I played. You, yeah. yeah, yeah, you never played pro, so like you don't really understand. You know, D- don't get me wrong. I will listen to you, but like you aren't gonna take in everything they say like you would like guy like Devin. Yeah. You know, and like people will just feed off of his energy, and it it would not surprise me if he's if he just stays in coaching and he gets to the big leagues or he gets in the front office and stuff because people just want to be around the guy. You just want to be around him. Fun fact, actually, uh, I coached big. I was just going to bring that up. (laughs) I coached uh, little kids baseball for four years. Did you actually? I still never really played. I've got one at bat, hit a pop fly. (laughs) Rick is Devin Travis. I have .0 innings. Rick is the Devin Travis of our friend group. This guy is never in a bad mood. Even when he is, he makes everyone feel good. That's that's what I try. Coach, so what do you what do you think about then? So you have a bad day. What are you thinking then? When I have a bad day, so I've I've told this on the podcast. I went there, but I suffered depression back in 2017. Right. And even my bad days don't come anywhere near those bad days. So I'm just grateful that I'm not in that spot. Right. Right. Because when you're in that spot, and I've told this before, but I'll tell you. I kind of look at my days You're either You got a one day That's a fucking shit That's one of the worst days ever You got a five Which is an okay day Nothing great Nothing bad And then you got those tens Those are awesome days When you're battling depression Every day is a fucking one Right Like you can have a Technically right. a bunch of things Can go great I felt great. it with my concussions and Yeah stuff, when, man, you, when you have down, a bunch man. of things Go great You're like oh this should be great But I still feel miserable So this is a one no, it's like I have my bad days that are like a three, four, or five. I'm like, oh fuck, at least it's not a one right now. Fuck, this is great. Mm-hmm. Look, yeah, I'm not miserable right now. I'm not depressed. Fuck. Life could be a lot worse. I can pay my bills. I got great friends. I got family that loves me. You know, I've got a good job. I get to fucking do cool shit like this and meet athletes and celebrities and all the other shit I get to do. Fuck. Okay, I guess right. this isn't really a bad day. Technically, this is a seven out of a ten, right? Fuck, why mm-hmm. not? So that's how I look at it. No matter how bad your day is, there's always it can always be worse. And there's people suffering way worse than you right. are right now. So fuck, what's there to be mad about? Yeah, that's exactly. how I personally look at it. Exactly. Like, and it's been working for me. Like lately. for me too. Just like I'm not gonna bring somebody down if I'm having a bad day. I'm having a personal bad day, but I don't need to rub it off on you. Yeah. I don't need to like say some things to you that's gonna make you upset or whatever. Like, why? Why would I do that? That's that's selfish of me. Yeah. So I think and, about that too. And there's always times you want to vent and just get things off your chest. But then you gotta remember, saying something nice to someone else or helping someone else lift their day up helps you lift your day up too. Hundred percent. It's like the the idea about. Like, vibes and energy it's like well fuck if i'm 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 around people who are miserable all day and everybody's miserable like, fuck there's a good chance i'm gonna be miserable but if i'm around everybody's in a good mood and everyone else is having fun and good times fuck, good chance i'm gonna be having fun and a good time so that's uh that's my train of thought yeah. but a kind, I, I jack story about coaching kids but yeah, yeah so i coach kids little kids baseball in uh royal york Again, I'm not that good of a coach, but I'm a fucking good hype man. Yeah. <laughs> oh, buddy, these kids. Are, up these kids. <laughs> <laughs> so I know, I know the perfect age for stealing bases is like, like it's you're still good. You're still in every fucking base when you're 11 years, mm. 12 years old. So I'm sending every kid, the skinny kids, the fat kids. I don't care who you are. You're, still, <laughs> you're going first pitch. Go, go, go. Steal, sleeve, yeah, yeah, Steve. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I'm sending every kid no matter what. And sometimes the kid's like, Rick, I can't do it. I'm like, what's the worst I get? What's the worst happen? You get caught. We got like nine more games left in the season. Okay, if you get caught, you might not let you steal in the finals, you know, two outs. <laughs> but you know what? Let's let's do this as many times right. as we can, man. So right. uh, that's the type. And funny enough, I, I'm still pretty close with a couple of kids' dads that I coach. Yeah. And we have a good time. But uh, yeah, I, I, you know, I don't even have kids, but I just love the idea of giving back. Right. Yeah. You know, it's Makes just you like, feel good. Yeah. And you see yeah. this like smile on these kids' faces. And like, yeah. You know, no, I, I don't think mom and dads like coaching like house league and select can have the same impact that a non-parent coach can have. Right. And like, you know, you're a little bit younger. You're kind of like cool. I'm right. not really cool, but kind of cool. <laughs> you, you have that effect on these kids where yeah. they look up to you like you're this like fucking rock star. It's like, kid, I've never even played baseball. Like you're, you're better. You're a better baseball player than right. I am. Right. But like, it doesn't matter. They have no yeah. idea. It doesn't matter. They yeah. say, oh, I can hit the ball far. Like he must be good. It's like, kid, I, I don't know how to throw from third to first. <laughs> like, like you, you can throw hey, we uh Everything's oh, whole, you know the, the hopefully the uh, the new lo- the new home the new uh, team everything kind of like goes in the upward trajectory and everything like that. But when the one day when the time comes to coach, hit us up. I got yeah, you. Yeah, for sure. I'm the f- we'll start the man. yellow team. We'll bring the yeah, yellow yeah, team yeah, back yeah, yeah. here. <laughs> Pitching coach right here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but Dalton, man, thanks for yeah, coming on, it's man. Been a blast, man. Such a great conversation. Absolutely. Um, we've got two questions we always ask every guest. Okay. The first, if there was a movie about your life, who would you want to star as you? Oh, you ask everybody this? Everybody. Yeah. We've had like 120 guests now yeah. or something. I think we only started bringing them in like, actually, no, near the beginning. Near the beginning. Yeah. yeah. Who would I want to star as me? Uh, Could be anyone from any point in time. That's tough. Uh, honestly, if the this might throw you off, but like I really want 
Keanu Reeves to play me. Fuck yeah. Even, he's sick. He's like, yeah. <laughs> Hardball? Uh, yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> and I love The Matrix. I love The Matrix movie. So I don't know, like, just like... His you love the being, Matrix, yeah, that's your, The that's Matrix, your... the John Wick, bro. John I'm, Wick's. I'm like, this guy sick. has to play Constantine. I'm like, I don't know. Like, he's just, he could be serious, but he could also, like, kind of be joke, joke around a little yeah, bit. Yeah. You know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I just, I just feel like he would do well as me. He also seems it. like the nicest person. Like, your stories about, like, he just, like, he'll hang out with random people, rides a subway home and shit. He, like, talks yeah. to strangers on the street. And he's Canadian. I don't know if you yeah. 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 Um, fun. Do you ever see the meme where it's like Thanos walks into the room? It's like I need the last stone. I'm gonna end the world. You're like, oh yeah, the dog's gone. All you gotta do is kill the dog. <laughs> and it's like the, two, the next slide. It's like John, John Wick walks in. Who killed my dog? <laughs> yeah, hundred percent. John Wick's a crazy. Movie. I gotta yeah, find that meme. I gotta find. I'm that, that, tonight, that meme today. That guy's, that guy's are crazy. They're making a Matrix Four, man. I'm so pumped about that. Really? I'm so pumped, dude. I might watch that. I might watch that series again. I think just because of like all the graphics and stuff that they're gonna have now, based oh, yeah. based off of like twenty years ago, it's gonna be it's gonna be nuts. Imagine dude. Neil doing the. Yeah, come on, yo. Bye, he's nuts. the one, bro. He's the one. <laughs> he's the one. <laughs> <laughs> we got last, last question. Like last question. If you could give one piece of advice to your younger self, what would it be? Honestly, just enjoy like the process and the journey. You know, I think as a kid, I stressed. I was, I beat myself up, and I'm, I'm still hard on myself. Like I'm, I critique myself a lot, and you know, because obviously I want to do well and I want to be the best version of myself. But like, just enjoy the process and just kind of realize that everything's gonna be okay. Like, just stay the course, do the things you need to do, surround yourself with good people, you know, control your thoughts, and everything's gonna be fine. I love it. Good yeah. advice, man. Love it. Best of luck. In the, new, in the new location. Thank you. Thank you guys for having me. If, uh, if the things open up, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll come down and catch a game. Oh, for sure. Yeah, yeah for yeah, sure. For sure. We'll sound, we, we actually went to a couple games in Arizona. Not Arizona, and I. Well, no, but he's. I think oh, going to Arizona. Yeah, yeah, because I got to go to Arizona because I got to do like my physical and yeah, stuff. Yeah. And then, uh, yeah, I'll probably head out there after that. So. Perfect. Awesome. Well, we'll definitely, we'll definitely come down. If people want to find out more about you and follow along the journey, what's the best way that they can uh, follow? Uh, you can follow me on Instagram. It's at Dalton Pompey. I don't have a Facebook, no Twitter, no nothing. Other than that, I'm a ghost. So I love it. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll the pals will definitely share some uh, some highlights and some stats because you know we'll definitely be watching. But Dalton, again, thank you so much for coming on. It's been an absolute pleasure. Awesome, man. Perfect. And guys, if you made it to the end of this episode, we appreciate you. Thank you so much for listening in. Follow Dalton. Follow your pals. Like, subscribe, review, all those fun things. And thanks, Cottage Springs, again, for uh, supplying our uh, Trinity Bellwoods uh, bevy party. Hey, if we're here next weekend, a couple on the park. If I'm still here this weekend, I might stop Uh, by the park. (laughs) Good to see you, Dalton. That's it. Signing (laughs) off, pals. Cheers.